I think sometimes actually talking about evangelism can be uh, unhelpful because in one sense evangelism isn't in the Bible. There's no Bible passage or verse that talks about evangelism or evangelizing. Uh, basically Jesus asks us to tell the good news about him um, and evangelism is just uh, it's a fancy way of saying I'm excited about Jesus and I want other people to experience that. I want to be able to tell my story. I want to be able to say what Jesus has done for me and I want to share that in the best way that I can with other people. I think evangelism is, is incredibly important because as far as telling people your story, it's the one thing that Jesus has asked us to do. So when he gave his disciples a commission, he says, go into the whole world and um, preach the good news, tell your story, be my witnesses. He said that he'd give us the power, he said that he'd be with us, but essentially he's trusted us with the message. Um, so Jesus has shown the love of God by dying on the cross, by giving his life for, for us, and he's trusted us to tell people about that. So if we don't do that, then God's mission of love uh, doesn't get through to the people who need to hear it. I think evangelism, I mean, I personally don't like to use the word because I think it just packages up something which should be a natural thing. So I love my wife. It's not difficult for me to tell people about her. I love my children. It's not difficult for me to to share news about how they're doing. And I love Jesus. And so it's not difficult for me to say, this is who Jesus is and this is what he's done for me. And I guess, you know, evangelism, it just gives us the chance to share with people the most important part of our lives. Uh, if, if Jesus means anything to you, then you want to share. I, th I think sometimes we can tie ourselves up in knots because we put too much pressure on ourselves or we make it, you know, we give it special words like evangelism where we feel like you've got to be an expert or you've got to know all the facts. When actually it's just, you tell your story. Jesus said, you know, be my witnesses. Just tell what you've experienced. Tell what has happened to you. Share the ups, share the downs, share your questions, share your doubts, but share the high points. And um, when you do that with people that you've got a relationship with, they listen and they are impacted by it. And then it, it came to a time in my late teens when suddenly just I began to really encounter God and his love for myself. And I couldn't help but tell people about it. And so I figured that I was in a school where most people didn't know about Jesus. And I wanted people to, to tell them about Jesus. And, and after a while, I figured out that it, it might just as well be me because I was, it's my school, they're my friends. I should tell them. And so I actually, I did an unusual thing in that I, I put on a meeting uh, and I said to all my friends, come to this meeting. I want to tell you my story. I want to tell you about Jesus. And um, I invited about 50 people and only five came. Um, but I just, I, I just went and I told them my story. I, I did a little kind of preach. It was during lunchtime in the, the geography classroom, and four of them became Christians. And I thought, oh my goodness, this this message has power. You know, people are not so far away as we think. And I've seen, you know, neighbours in my street right here who I've prayed for for years and then invited to things. Uh, no, sorry, Philip, I'm an atheist. I don't believe that stuff. And then over time, realized that actually God is working and seeing those boundaries come down um, and to be able to literally baptize my neighbors, to see my neighbors become um, part of the team in church, to be able to, to pray together in this house. The issue is with us because we get discouraged or we think we we don't have enough information or knowledge or maybe we don't have the right kind of personality. We're not like evangelists that we see. But actually, when, when we pray for ourselves, when we pray for one another, praying for one another in home groups, pray for opportunities, pray for boldness. That is what Jesus told the disciples to do. He says, you know, stay here, pray for power, pray for the Holy Spirit to come in you. Pray and be, ask God to give you the gifts that you need in order to share with, with courage and confidence. And praying for one another, particularly in a home group setting, really makes a difference. To be able to say to one another, how are you doing? How, how is it going at work? How is it going with your neighbours? How is it going with your family? And, and pray, you know, when we have discouragements, pray for one another. And pray, God, not only give me boldness and your spirit, 
but give me opportunities. Give me those openings and conversation where I can step into it. And because I'm praying, now when those conversation moments happen, I'm willing and I'm ready and I can, you know, with a little bit of boldness, I can leap in and say, well, look, can I just share what Jesus means to me? Um, and maybe come and, and witness this church service with me or this special Alpha course that we're doing, or just, just come for the first one. You know, little things like that. It's just little steps. I think the average person takes around about seven goes, if you like, seven contacts with the gospel uh, before it, it sort of makes sense for them. And so being willing to, to invest in people for the long haul, to love people into the arms of Jesus.